A 3D printer's nozzle is the last thing on the hot end that filament passes through before it is deposited into your printed part. Over the years, it has evolved from simple brass with a single cavity to various materials, coatings, lengths, and internal geometries. While a brass nozzle is still by far the most common and what will ship standard on most 3D printers, if you're wanting to print with abrasive materials or push the flow capabilities of your 3D printer, you will want to upgrade. Today we are looking at the Basel Nozzle, a full tungsten carbide nozzle with a very unique internal geometry designed by Rentable Socks from the Annex Engineering Discord. This nozzle was sent to me for testing from North Print 3D a little over a month ago, so I've had some time to see what it is all about. Today we will cover the details of the Basel Nozzle, how it has performed in both my flow and general printing test, and my overall thoughts on this nozzle based off my time with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. The Basel nozzle is made entirely of tungsten carbide, which is arguably the best material to make a nozzle from. Its hardness rating is a 9 on the MOHS or MOZ scale compared to brass, which is a 3, and is second only to diamond. This makes tungsten carbide an excellent choice for printing with abrasive materials. Tungsten carbide can also withstand extremely high temperatures, while most of us will never need to print above 300 Celsius, and that's with something like polycarbonate, if you did have a printer capable of printing with say Peak or Ultim and you needed a nozzle that can reach up to those 450 Celsius temperatures, well then tungsten carbide is a great option for that. Another plus of that is that if you do get a nasty clog or just build up over time, you can remove the nozzle, hit it with a torch and then clear out whatever's inside of it, reinstall it and you'll be back up and running. Another very important property for a nozzle is its thermal conductivity. Brass has a much higher thermal conductivity than say steel or hardened steel, which is why when you upgrade a 3D printer's nozzle from brass to say hardened steel, the manufacturers will often have you raise your printing temperature by somewhere between five and 10 Celsius. On the other hand, tungsten carbine has great thermal conductivity and it is actually very, very similar to that of brass. The Basel nozzle has a pretty unique internal geometry in the shape of an X or a cross and the purpose of that is to give the filament more surface contact and increase its flow. This idea has become really popular in the past year with the release of the Bontec CHT nozzles. The CHT splits the filament down three paths before it is extruded which greatly increases its flow capabilities. This exact design is patented by 3D Solex so the Basel nozzle uses a slightly different approach with its internal pattern. Currently the Basel nozzle comes in one option which is a 0.5 M6 threaded nozzle. This does mean that it will also work with MK8 blocks but you will need to adjust your Z end stop or your Z offset to accommodate that slightly longer throat. As for the test subject, this is going on my LDO Voron Switchwire. I love this printer and it is currently using the stock 0.4 plated copper nozzle that ships with the Fadish Dragonfly hot end. It has been a great nozzle, but I would love to not have to worry about printing with abrasives. Before removing the nozzle, I wanted to run some flow tests to get a baseline on its output. For this, I used the web app version of Stefan from CNC Kitchen's flow automation test. With this, I printed out Polymaker Polylite PLA at 200, 210, and 220 Celsius from 8 to 18 cubic millimeters per second. I then grabbed a standard V6 style 0.5 millimeter brass nozzle to get a more accurate comparison since the Basel is also a 0.5 millimeter nozzle and ran the exact same tests. Finally, it was time to install the Basel nozzle and run those tests again, and the results were not what I was expecting. Although both the Basel and 0.5 brass beat the 0.4 plated copper nozzle across the board, the 0.5 brass was able to output more material at 200 and 210 Celsius than the Basel. Finally, at 220 Celsius and 16 cubic millimeters per second, the Basel took the lead, but just slightly before dropping behind at 18 cubic millimeters per second. Since the gap between the two seemed to be shrinking, the hotter I went in temperature, I ran the test again, but this time at 230 and 240 Celsius. The results were near identical, with the Basel nozzle having a slightly higher output in a few measurements, but for the most part was right behind the 0.5 millimeter brass nozzle. We are talking neck and neck with the difference often being just a hundredth of a gram. I did notice that there was a recommendation to use boron nitride on the threads and since I'd just gotten some in, 
I removed the Basel nozzle, applied and reinstalled, but this had very little effect on the output. Hello, this is Daniel from the future. After I was done with the flow test on the switch wire, I reached out to Northprint 3D with the results of that flow test. And they were convinced that something was definitely off and that it could be related to the tensioning on the Clockwork One extruder. I wanted to make sure I did my due diligence, so I grabbed the Ender 5 Pro that I have with the Micro Swiss NG extruder that has a lot of push force and I ran those flow tests again with a 0.5 brass nozzle as well as a standard brass nozzle and wow were the results very different. For these tests I used a different PLA, a temp range of 210, 220 and 230 and a flow range of 12 to 24 cubic millimeters per second. Although there was not much of a difference at the lower flow rates, the Basel nozzle really shined once we hit 20 cubic millimeters per second and up. At 24 cubic millimeters per second, the Basel nozzle was able to output roughly 15 to 20% more material depending on the temperature. I had been pretty stumped with my initial test results that I got off of the Voron switch wire. That's why I ran it at different temperatures, also trying with the Boron nitride, and this was much more in alignment with what I was anticipating I was going to be able to get with this nozzle. We will be updating the switch wire to the stealth burner tool head with the Clockwork 2 and at that point I'm definitely going to be running those tests again to see what the results I get are like with this tool head versus the afterburner and the Clockwork 1 that I had. Once I was done with flow testing I ran a few prints in regular PLA to make sure the changes I made to my profile were still looking good and I was very happy with the quality of the parts that I was getting. Then I switched to carbon fiber PTG and I did a fair bit of printing for a hot end assembly that I've been meaning to print out. The parts turned out awesome and although I definitely still need to tune a little bit of the flow and the retraction for this specific filament on this printer, these are some of the best results I've gotten printing with carbon fiber filament, especially printing at the speeds I was printing at which was 150 millimeters per second and 4000 acceleration. I've done that on the bamboo printer but previously most of my carbon printing has been very very slow to prevent, uh, prevent any kind of clogs or just issues with the extrusion. Overall I've really enjoyed using the Basel nozzle and one thing I really like is that compared to some of the other premium wear resistant options out there that just use a uh, insert for the tip that's wear resistant or they have some kind of coating, this entire nozzle is made out of tungsten carbide. This means you don't have to worry about the tip of the nozzle falling out, which yes, I have seen happen, or a brass throat potentially getting damaged, which is a huge plus. At roughly 80 US dollars, this is definitely up there in price compared to a lot of other nozzles. If you're only occasionally wanting to print with abrasive filaments, then picking up a hardened steel nozzle for a fraction of the cost is going to be plenty. However, if you print with a lot of or even primarily abrasive filaments, which I know some people do, and those filaments can be very pricey, and you don't want to go through the hassle of having to swap out plated copper nozzles or even hardened steel nozzles, then the Basel nozzle is a very solid option. A lot of the great mechanical and thermal properties of tungsten carbide also makes it incredibly difficult to machine. This is very likely what is contributing to much of its cost and also the reason why we don't see a lot of other nozzle manufacturers out there offering tungsten carbide nozzles. It is very impressive that Rentable Socks has been able to produce these nozzles and I do anticipate there being a demand even if that is primarily in the performance and production 3D printer space just due to its cost. Cost. And that has been the Basel nozzle. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if I don't know the answers, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.